Section 1.1, the very first section, is proportional reasoning. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to solve for x to the nearest tenth. So when you're given fractions like these, these are, could also be called ratios because any fraction is a ratio. And when you're trying to solve for x, here's the easiest way to do it. You do what is called cross multiply. And what that means is that you take the value on the bottom and the value on the top of one of the fractions and you have to know both the values. So for instance, in this case, I know the 25 and the 5. Those are both known values. I wouldn't take the 20 and the x because I don't know the x. So what do I do is I take 25, times it by 5, and then this value here that's left, I divide by it. So cross multiply 25 times 5, 25 times 5, and then I divide by 20, 6.25. And notice I asked to the nearest tenth, one decimal. So that would be 6.3. So that means that x is equal to 6.3. All right, let's go on to here. Here's another example. Here I have how many apples per people. So here is a ratio or a fraction that says four apples for every two people. Over here I'm asking how many apples, so x apples, per 15 people. So if I have two people, that means I need four apples because I need four apples for every two people. If I have 15 people though, how many apples do I need? So again, I look at the top and the bottom and I try to figure out which one I have. Well, I have the four apples and 15 people. So again, I cross multiply. I take four times 15 and then I divide by two. So take four times 15 divided by two, which is 30. So my value for X is equal to 30. That means I need 30 apples for 15 people. If you looked at 4 over 2, and if I was going to try to reduce that, so I have 4 apples for every 2 people, how many apples would that be per 1 person? Right? Because from 2 to 1, you're dividing by 2. So on the top, I also have to divide by 2. And that would be 2 apples for every one person. This here is what is called a unit ratio because it compares per one. It is a comparison per one. So it's called a unit ratio. You can also write that as two apples per one person. Those are both the same. This is written in ratio form, this is written in fraction form. Alright, let's move on to another example here. A can of paint, a can, so that's one can of paint, covers 39 meters squared of wall space. How many cans are needed for 200 meters squared? So if I'm going to set up a ratio here, so I have ratio of cans to wall space. So I know that my ratio is one can, per 39 meters squared. Now I know that these are going to be equivalent ratios and I'm going to say how many cans are needed so I know cans are on top. So x cans, because I'm trying to figure out how many cans are needed per 200 meters squared. It's important that you understand how to set up the ratio. Now again I do the cross multiplication. I look to see which top and bottom I have which are these two. I take 1 times 200 divided by 39. So I take 1 times 200, which is obviously just going to be 200, divided by 39 is going to be 5.1, we'll say 5.1, 5.1 cans. So because you can't buy 5.1 cans, you're going to have to make it 6 cans. You're going to have to buy 6 cans, you're going to have a little bit left over, which is okay. So how many cans are needed? Actually six. 5.1 is accurate, but if I'm looking at how many cans, I would need six. All right, last example here. The ratio of flour, cups of flour to eggs, is three to two. How much flour would be needed if five eggs were used? So I have this ratio. I'm gonna write it in fraction form so it's a bit easier to see. So I have three, and remember the ratio of cups, flour comes first, then eggs come second. Okay, so that means 3 
is flour, two is eggs. Flour comes first, eggs come second. So I have three cups of flour oops, for every two eggs. And if I'm setting up a ratio, I want to know how much flour, flour is on top. So X flour over five eggs. See how I set that up? Keep flour on top, eggs on bottom. Next thing I have to do is again, check out cross multiplication. So two values that I have, and the two values I have are three and five. So three and five, and two is what's left. So I have three times five divided by two. So three times five divided by two is seven and a half. So that means that x equals seven and a half. And remember that's on top, so that's my cups of flour. So given a sentence, you have to come up with the ratio. Given the ratio, you have to be able to solve for the unknown value. Your assignment is in your workbook on page 21, numbers 1 to 9.